Okay, so this tutorial is going to go through the production of the elevation and uh, connection detail diagram that is going to be asked for uh, for the serpentine wall. So what we're going to look at here, I've actually already have the finished product in here so you guys can get a sense of what we're going to be producing. Um, and it's obviously uh, two graphics. This is a diagram to show how the relationship, we get a sense of how the elevation will work, but then also how these things are going to start to stack and connect together. So as I'm going to go through this, uh, I'm going to go ahead and hop back into Rhino. Uh, we shouldn't have to run any scripts at this point. We should be just good to go. And you can see that I've started out by rendering this out. Uh, I actually um, will go ahead and start with the elevation here because that will make a little bit more sense. Uh, and so what I've done is I've gone into front view and just rendered out an elevation uh, using the standard uh, render properties here. Uh, so we're going to do a transparent background, and I actually turned off the skylight because I found that that was washing out my uh, my rendering here. So I'll go ahead and hit OK for that. Then we're going to go ahead and um, generate a color for the material so that this actually starts to show up. And uh, I've gone ahead and gone with yellow. Uh, you can go with red. Uh, we'll go ahead and do something different. I think chartreuse is a really nice color. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and render that out. And uh, you'll note that this is a um, black backdrop. If we go back into our render properties, which I'll show you in a second, we can go ahead and um, change that over to uh, a transparent. So that when it's always going to appear black like this whenever we have that transparent setting checked. Uh, we can also start to adjust the exposure in the Rhino. So you can see that bending. And so we can, we can also come in here and so to play with that, so we can make this really washed out. Uh, essentially, we can just really dial that up, so it adds a little bit of nice pop to it. We're looking for these shadows in the diagram here. So we're gonna hit, hit save, and I've already started doing this, but we'll go ahead and I'm just gonna rebuild this here. All right, so then we'll go ahead and uh, actually hold on, I'll, I'll do it one more time because you'll note that I want to save this as a portable network graphic. And so then you can see that, that because I've done that, the, um, the black has gone away in the backdrop here. And I'll go ahead and hop back into my render properties to show you guys what I'm talking about. So check the transparent background. Uh, so even though the background set is a solid color, I don't need to worry about that. All right. And we'll hit cancel out of that. Oh, and one other thing we should discuss here. In the render properties up here at the top, the resolution. I've gone ahead and instead of just doing a viewport, I've gone ahead and set that to 16 by 20. I've also set the DPI at uh, 72 DPI and anti-aliasing at high at times 10. And that'll increase the quality of the, the light analysis as you guys are going through that. Okay, which is not not a thing detail obviously. All right, and then what I've gone ahead and done is using the make 2D function. I've gone ahead and hit that and we go into plan and we can take this and just move that away. Um, and then in plan, we can take that and export it to Illustrator. And so just select export and I actually already have this in here, so I'm not going to repeat that. But uh, so I'll go ahead and delete that away. You can see that I actually have that over here. And now the next component of this is to show the connection detail. And so what I've done here is I've created a simple array of nine of them, nine tiles against the one. And we're going to go ahead and do this in X on a metric here to show how that's going to work. And so I've gone ahead. Uh, the way you get this view orientation is you will come into any paraline view. And using the rotate and orbit tool, you can come in here and just click that and rotate that in there. And so that will enable us to start to see what these guys are doing here. So you guys can take any axon or extra guy symmetric view because this is just simply a diagram. But you can center that. And we'll go ahead and I will re-render this. Alright, and so uh, this should take a couple of minutes. Oh, it's going much faster. Uh, and we can go ahead and get this in here. The only trouble with this is you're going to see we have a lot of really hard shadows. Um, and so that's not going to be ideal. And if we want to use the right 
is not really going to give us what we want. A really nice quality diagram. It's going to be really heavy. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust some render properties in here. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on the skylight to give us a little bit nicer effect here. So hit OK. And this is going to increase my render time, but it will end up ultimately uh, enabling me to get a much nicer byproduct out of that. Okay, and then uh, through the, the magic of editing, you'll see this magically appear. Um, this should only take about a minute or two. But... Okay, and so you can already see that in here, uh, we've got some, a much nicer setting here in terms of the light. And uh, so we can go ahead and save this out. We can also do a little bit of gamma correction in here if we think that that's appropriate. Uh, I think it actually looks pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and just essentially leave it alone. So if I hit save, I'll call this Serpentine Connection, also the portable network graphic, so it can maintain that transparency. So I'll hit save here. Alright, and I'll go ahead and close that down. And uh, now we need the line work out of this, and for this is we're going to do something a little bit um, special. I'm going to show you some uh, different settings here for the uh, make 2D function and so we can get some a really nice uh, clean diagram to get some of these this other sort of line work geometry that might otherwise be hidden. So if we go into uh, we pull up the ghosted render you can see we get a really nice sort of faded view of that and we get a nice, better sense of the geometry so we're going to actually embed that into the diagram here. I'm going to turn that back on to shaded select this geometry and now I'm going to type make 2D and now, uh, under this dialog box, I'm now going to check the show hidden lines. And I'll go ahead and get this. And this is going to generate a new layer over here uh, when it actually produces these um, to, make this actually, to uh, make this actually generate the hidden lines. If I can talk. Okay. All right, and you can see that that projected that onto the plan here. All right. I'm just going to move this away and I'm going to export this here in a second. But you can see what it did is uh, it sort of made a mess. Obviously, this isn't very clear as a graphic initially, but you can see the hidden lines are all in white and the uh, heavy line, the actual lines that you would see and edges are all in black. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take this. Let's go. I'm going to export this serpentine connection and we'll do an underscore here. Hit save. And that doesn't really matter. So uh, now we're going to hop in here, and I'm going to go ahead and I'll just close these guys down that I'm not using. So we're going to hit Control O, and we're going to go ahead and scroll down here. We've got this, and this, and this, and that. So I'll open these four files up that I've generated. Let's see, uh, we maintained our transparency. And so we have, if we zoom out here, all of the stuff. So I'm going to do a, let's start with the generation of this graphic here. So I'm going to hit uh, Shift Alt to make this scale nicely. Let me scale that down to, so it fits within the boundaries here. Switch over to this. I'm going to hit Control A to select all. Control X to cut, hop over to my other guy, hit Control V to paste. I don't know that that's very large, but we're going to just grab this Shift and Alt and scale that down. And zoom in, Control Plus and Control Minus. And that was pretty close, but. You can see we still kind of have a mess going here. So I'm going to hit Control 2 to lock the image in the back. So now I can't move the image at all. I can only grab the line work. We're going to separate these guys into layers. So I'm going to select the white, one of the white curves here. So you can see that. I'm going to go ahead and select same stroke color. And then I'm going to do a Control X to cut that. You can see that clean that up uh, relatively nicely. So if you wanted to go for that, you could. I'm going to create a new layer and then I'm going to edit paste in place. So I'm putting it right back where it was, but now I'm putting it on a separate layer. Okay. I'm not sure do that just yet. I'm going to repeat that process 
for my, if I hit control X, and it paste in place. And so now I've got this ordered in the, uh, in the appropriate structure. I have the underlying image, now I have the hidden line work underneath, and then I have the, um, the heavier line work, the black line work um, on top, and they're all in separate layers. So now I can edit them uh, as I see fit, and I can toggle things on and off as well. So I'm going to go ahead and now I'm going to go and lock this upper layer. So now I can do a select hidden line. And I'm going to modify these lines so that I can actually uh, create a really nice diagram in here. And I'm going to go ahead and put my stroke editor. And I'm going to create a dash line one point by one point. Let's actually save some of the things that I have in here. All right. And then I'm going to set the line work here to black as well. And I'm going to turn off the fill. So. If we hit control zoom, you can see it's still sort of a mess. Uh, and it looks like when I did that, it turned off my dash and it messed up my line weight there. So I'm going to go ahead and redo that. Let's go a little bit heavier so we can see it. Hit control zoom. All right, and now we have a, a relatively nice diagram in here starting to form. If we go back into my layers and I'm going to unlock this. It looks like I'm just a little bit off on my um, guy there. All right, so now that's all uh, actually sitting on top of the geometry properly. All right, so now we can zoom in and out and really start to get a sense of how this is starting to look. So we're starting to see how those connection details are starting to function. I'm going to hit Control Alt 2 to unlock everything in the scene. So now I should be able to grab that image. Control Alt 2. There we go. It wasn't because it didn't work because it was on a locked layer. Now I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to go ahead and group this together. So now when I grab this, I can move this off to the side. All right, so obviously that's step one of our uh, diagram. And so now we're ready to come over here. I'm going to go ahead and Control X, just cut that off of there. And I'm going to go ahead and paste it on here. And I am going to go ahead, I'm going to work. Off to the side here. While I set this up, Control A, Control X, Control V. Go ahead, scale that down. And H. V to go back to transform. Alright, and it looks like I'm um, again control two to lock the geometry on the back there so I can just select or sorry the image. And I can just grab this guy and I'm gonna overshoot it so I can come back and sort of trick the smart snaps here. Control Alt 2. That's looking pretty good. Right click and group this as well. I'm going to go ahead and cut this now and put it on the back layer here. So now it's on the farthest layer back, so it'll sit underneath everything. V. And you can start to see that this is starting to sort of interfere with this. And now we're going to you know, scale this up to have the that elevation going. You can start to see we're getting close. And then just so I can uh, make this, this is obviously not the subject matter, it's more, really more about the connection detail, the elevation is supporting that. So I'm going to drop the opacity on this down 60% here and make that really fade to the back. All right. And then from there, we are now ready to save this out. I'm going to go ahead and just compress this a little bit and then I'm going to crop this down to get a really nice sense of the artboards here. And actually, I'm going to dial that down to 50%. And then if we go to, we can document setup, edit artboards. We're going to come in and crop this down. All right, now we're ready to go ahead and save this out. And this is ready, uh, control shift save. Uh, now I'd recommend you guys save this as your 
uh, we'll call this diagram demo. Uh, so keep this as an Illustrator file because what you're going to want to do is, if you decide you want to put this into your portfolio, uh, you want to make sure that you maintain all of your vector line working. Because as soon as we save this out as an image to post online, we're going to lose all that uh, really delicate line work that we've gone through the trouble of um, aligning and generating and, and controlling the line weights on. Okay? All right, but uh, that's it. Go ahead and hit save for this. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and file. Uh, save as. Export. We want to export this as a PNG. All right. So I hit save. Screen is fine because uh, we're obviously we're going to be posting this online. Pull that up, and there you go. You can see that we've already been doing that. It doesn't give us the best quality image. You may want to talk, play around with some of the export settings for that. Alrighty, but that's it.